You're not trying to compromise a federal agent, are you, Miss Petrov? Hmm, I think this agent already seems fairly compromised to me. said about clean living stamina <laughs> and now the four o'clock news dateline chicago the nine-week-old iron workers strike ended yesterday when al capone stepped in to negotiate a settlement as capone glad handed a crowd of well-wishers in front of union headquarters he pledged to continue doing his good duty as a citizen of chicago can i Thanks. ever get away from this guy Capone's men started the strike, so now Capone skips 20% off the workers' pay instead of it staying in the contractor's pocket. Al Capone gives people what they want. People don't stop drinking just because the government says they can't. I'm not saying people don't drink. I'm saying Capone will suck the union dry, just like he sucks dry everything he touches. So he makes a profit. As long as everyone benefits, what's the harm? You sound like an accountant. I am an accountant. Correction. <laughs> Beautiful account. <laughs> mm. Not now, I'm late. I'm late. <laughs> Let me have three of these. There we go. Thank you, boys. Eli. Right now. Thank you, Larry. I got the invoices over there. Whoa! Eli! Got an order. All right, good boy. Would you come down to the station and file a report? No, thank you. I don't need your help. Let's go. Come on, hurry. This people are as tight as a clam. Old ways die hard. 
Where my father came from in Russia, a policeman committed the crimes. Well, this is America, sweetheart. If your dad wants to survive down here, you better change his ways. You gotta convince your father to start using the police. <laughs> Look at him. Max Petrov depends on no one. Just a sweat, guts, and blood. Myra, I'm done. I love him. Mmm, <laughs> not now. <laughs> not now. Thanks, Petrov. Paul Robbins. I'm a federal agent. I paid my taxes. I may be able to help you with your problem. You can cut and sew, you can help. Here's my card. If you have any more trouble, call me. Yeah, sure. I have to go. Call you later. So what do you think? What happened to the pilot? Oh, it was the last one, the hunting guy. Papa. Always, always searching for the noble savage. My advice, find somebody as smart and ambitious as you are. I can pay that kind of money for you to go to that fancy school so you could become a breadwinner. Just because they're good looking doesn't mean they're dumb. Set it up for me right out. Nothing too fancy. I'll tell you one thing. Make sure you got a couple of nice broads. I'm in the mood. All right, thanks. Go ahead, fellas. We're gonna have to increase our volume of production to make up our losses to that bastard Ness. I've been checking out the businesses that fit our bill. So far, I've targeted a handful of sites within a 20-mile radius that have the goods for a large-scale distillery. I suggest we start here. Kenny Tool and I, Evanston. Why Evanston? Frank thinks there'll be less heat on us, out in the sticks. I agree with him. This Kenny Tolan die. still in operation. No, it's a going concern, but I don't see it as a problem. Looks like we're going to be in the Tolan Nye business. Nitty personally checked out about every business within a two-hour drive of Chicago. What's his game? Got them all but closed up within the city limits. They've got no choice but to branch out. There'll be fewer police, less people looking for them. Probably spreads out the harder it is for us to keep them in check. So we've got to anticipate their moves. Finally. Sorry. Sorry won't cut it. We're shorthanded, Paul. We need every man up to speed. He's got lipstick on his chin. I pray he's not in love again. I was downtown at the county planning department. A guy I know had some information for me. Does this guy wear cherry lipstick? That's the price we have to pay for information. Some jamoke in a shark skin suit paid cash for a dozen blueprints of warehouses spread all over Cook County. No legit contractor pays cash down there. So? So, this jamoke fits the description of one Franco Nitty. This I gotta hear. I put 400 miles on Taylor Nitty to Helen Gone. You make one stop and nail his locations. It's called clean living, son. You got surveillance photos, right? About a million of them. Well, if Capone was looking to set up a still, he'd want blueprints to see what's inside, right? These businesses are ripe for the pickings. Nice going. All right, we'll each pick a site and stake it out. Let's get to work. Paul? I don't mean to try in your personal life, but uh, you've been late quite a bit. You seem a little distracted. Everything okay? Yeah, sure, fine. I don't know. Hell, <laughs> Elliot, I... I think I'm in love. I'd like to meet her. I'll talk to Catherine. We'll have you both over for dinner. And Paul, you be careful out there. With this job, if you're not paying full attention, somebody gets hurt. Right, right. got the best loading dock. Get them back in two, three trucks at a time. Quick loading and unload. How you doing, fellas? How you doing? Yeah. All right here. These drums, they can pull 20 cubic yards of product a minute. At 25% capacity, that matches anything we got going for us right now. Sounds good, Frank. 
Now come here. I want to show you something down at this end. Out of all the sites, this one's got the best possibilities for expansion. The place looks great, Frank. I'll tell you right now, this place has got a lot of potential. Hey, I'm Joe Kinney. What can I do for you? How you doing, Joe? You know who I am? I run an honest business here. That's great, Joe. But I like honest businessmen working for me. What the hell are you talking about? Mr. Kenny, why don't you say hello to your new employer? Great, Joe. I'm gonna make this more than what you want. A lot more. Frankie. I want you to consider this a down payment. There's plenty more where this came from. Gotcha, Mr. Capone. I get a shipment of these in uh, four or five weeks. How's that? See anything you like? I need a closer look. We're getting in a lot of stuff now with fake fur on the inside trim. Do you believe that? Hmm. Deborah, uh, show Mr. Schnuggus how nice the coat feels inside. Uh, Deborah, would you show Mr. Schnuggus the new full line? Yes, Mr. Petro. You'd never get away with this if Mom was still alive. Mm. You want to do business? You give people what they want. Hmm? Most of these buyers are from out of town, so they're lonely. Mm. So they buy Deborah a few drinks and a dinner. What's it hurt? Hmm? Listen, I've been going through the books. Papa, these hijackings are costing us a fortune. You've got to let the police help. Police, what do they care? For all we know, it's the police who's doing it. You won't be able to make payroll, Deborah or no Deborah. You know, someday you're going to come down off that high horse of yours. Come with me. Hmm? See these people? Because of Max Petroff, they have food on their table. They work hard, sure, and I pay as good as anybody. And I try to treat everybody fairly. But if we go under, their children go hungry. So if Deborah needs to be nice to a buyer to make a sale, I do it because I don't. The guy down the block does, and my people go hungry. Ah, oh, this machine. <laughs> no, no, look. These machines, they're like children. Uh, if you hit them, they act worse just to spite you. Uh, but just a little nudge. <laughs> Thank you. I love this place. And I love you, you stubborn old fool. Hi. Hi. You look terrible. Thanks, I've been in surveillance all night. Mm -hmm. uh, the secret agent, right? Treasury agent. Nice <laughs> to see you again, sir. Right, right. Mickey, come on over. Where's he taking you? Dinner and a show. You kids have fun, hmm? We will. Father's always in a hurry, isn't he? <laughs> I've never seen him eat lunch or even take a coffee break. What time do we have to be at your boss's house for dinner? Nine. Where do you say we skip the show? <laughs> Didn't know your price range, Max, so I brought the whole schmear. 38 caliber snub nose, stainless steel. Nice heft to it. Um, how does it work? Just put bullets in it. Point it at a guy's heart. Pull the trigger. Then he don't bother you no more. I was thinking, if I can get this weekend off, we're gonna go to St. Louis. St. Louis? What for? Meet my family. Oh, Paul, I don't know. I'm really busy and I have to help my father and everything. Hey, we're gonna be late. Father doesn't like me very much, does he? <laughs> he doesn't think anyone's good enough for his baby. 
guy I saw your father with this afternoon. Mickey Case? They play cards together. Yeah? Well, he wasn't there to play gin rummy. He's a gun dealer. My father's such an old fool sometimes. I just hate to see him get in over his head, you know? Paul? You know Petrov and son? Well, I mean, there is no son. They had me and then my mom died. But well, my father really could use a son right now. He's determined to ride along on the midnight delivery tonight. And you want me to look out for him? You tell me when and where, and I'll be there. <laughs> so the model got caught in traffic, and my father ended up showing the fur himself. His skinny little hairy legs sticking out at the bottom of the coat. <laughs> it was the biggest order he ever got. <laughs> Your father must be a real character. Oh, yeah, he's a wonderful man. <laughs> You've got to be careful with these truck hijackings. The main problem is they're always on duty. Sorry. No, you're right. I appreciate your concern. Your father really should come into the 20th century and start using the police. I know. I, I know. It's the same with business. He does everything the old way. I say, Papa, you have to learn accounting. He says, no, no, no. I have everything up here. You're an accountant? Mm. I started my own firm. Well, I mean, there's one employee, me. She's going to help me with my money. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what there is of it. Excuse me. Federal agents have a tough time making ends meet. Low pay, long hours, possibility of getting shot. Sounds glamorous, doesn't it? Mm, it's not the job that's glamorous. Well, we gotta go. Sorry. You'll never get used to it. Paul, remember midnight. Don't worry, I'll be there, I promise. Damn it, this is ridiculous. Where the hell are they? Maybe, maybe our information was wrong. Lever boy's just upset because he's not spending time with his latest squeeze. Give me a break, all right? I just hope we're not spinning our wheels here, you know? You think this is a waste of time? You haven't been paying attention. Capone is under a spotlight in Chicago. He's got to move what's left of his inventory and open up some new breweries now, or else he's finished. Paul, he'll have his trucks here tonight. He can't afford not to. All right, lads, look sharp. Right here. Lucky for you. Well, what do we got here? Oh, look at this. It's Beanie Moss. Stroke of luck, gentlemen, and Capone Capo. All in all, a good night's work. Get him out of here. Come on. Elliot, I gotta go. Go. Ah, uh, to be young and in love. Thrill. I got it. Hey. 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 
Was it my first? Leave me alone, you bastard! <laughs> That's a tough break, Pops. They're ours now. I said leave me be. <laughs> I'm warning you! <laughs> Let's go! You're going to be all right. Keep it going. Becky, promise me. Keep the shop going. You'll be back to work in no time. Promise me. I promise. I promise. Where the hell were you? You were supposed to be there. Becky, don't come near me. Better go now. Becky, I'm sorry. Your father called from the hospital. He wanted to know how we're doing. I hope you didn't tell him the truth. Mr. Huddleston called from Wisconsin again. He's going to hire a local collection agency if we can't pay. Tell him I'm out of town. Uh, tell him that the money's on the way. Just tell him anything. If we don't pay, we won't have any material to work with. Then we'll get another supplier. What else? Two more drivers quit. I'm trying to find substitutes. <laughs> Is there any good news you can tell me? That fellow of yours called again. Tell him I'm not here. There's got to be some place I can get the money. Fourth Capone location we've closed down in a month. Yeah, but where there's a rat, there's always another rat hole. Oh, he'll keep coming back, all right. And we will be there waiting. He's desperate. Why don't we keep old Snorky under 24-hour surveillance? Besides, I'm dying to try out my new camera. No, Elliot, the lad may be right. If Capone's under pressure, he'll have to act quickly. Right. Robbins. You with us, Paul? Yeah, we're uh, tailing Capone. Right. You'll take the first shift. Tony, you're up second. What are you waiting for? I'll get the keys. Hey. I want you to take my shift. I got plans, I can't. I'm gonna ask Becky to marry me. You sure about this, buddy? I've never been more sure in my life. End of a legendary career. Good luck, Romeo. Thanks. You know, I can't believe you. How the hell can you sit there playing around when we gotta find a new location? And quick. Will you, Frank? Something will come along. Excuse me, Al. We got some dame who insists on seeing you. Let her in, Frankie. Sure. Advantage. 
see you know my name, and I haven't had the pleasure yet. Rebecca Petrov. Nice to meet you. I run my father's company, Petrov Furs. I have a business proposition. Ladies, go powder your noses, all right? So what can I do for you, Miss Petrov? My friends call me Becky. I prefer Rebecca. It's more biblical. Please, have a seat. Look, Al, you want to shoot a... No, Frank. Miss Petrov's a lady. Please sit. So what can I do for you? I'll get right to the point. Our trucks are repeatedly being vandalized by hoodlums from the north side. They beat our drivers, steal our furs. My father refuses to get help from the police. North side, that'd be the Packhouse gang. The Mulhern brothers are crazy mean bastards, if you'll excuse my French. Yeah, well, those crazy mean bastards shot my father. What would you like me to do for you? A few of your men riding in my trucks. I think our hijacking problems would be as well as over. And I need a short-term loan to help us keep going. Until we get the fall line out, then you'd be paid back on a first dollar basis. Why would I want to do business with you? Because I have a good head for business. Excuse us, will you, Frank? Yeah, sure. Miss Petrov. Mr. Nitty. Do you care for some champagne? Please. <laughs> something, Miss Petro. Mm. You're a very fascinating woman. You're beautiful. You're very intelligent. You know what you want, you go get it. Does that ever cause you any problems? I find most men can't handle it. Well, I think you'll find me a little different than most men. money can buy. Exquisite. So do I have a partner, Mr. Capone? Maybe. If we prove compatible. Doctors don't kill you. The food will. What are you doing here? Uh, Becky, the, the young man tried. Uh, he had obligations. If I would have listened to him, I wouldn't be here. How are things at the shop? Great. Great. We're going to get the winter line out. My daughter, she's a genius with numbers. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Well, just like you said, give the people what they want. Damn right. I'm going to be out of here in a couple of days, and i got to get back before she works to help to death. Well, you just rest and take it easy. I've got everything under control, which reminds me. I've got to go. I'll see mm. you later. Here's the truck. Let's go. <laughs> Hold it right there. Take anything you want, but don't hurt me, okay? Come on, Anna. We're not going to hurt you. What are you afraid of? <laughs> I'm not going to hurt you. Let's unload. Let's unload. Hold it. What the? Oh. Give me those toys. We got a little surprise for you, monks. My, my, who 
brought his masked men. Patty Moore. Hey, I'm Patty. I'm fine, help, thank you. What are you doing? I check on my trucks. I know they was yours, I'm honest. Yeah, we all make mistakes, right, Patty? That's right, Al. That's right, Al. We all make mistakes. <laughs> right. Sure, Chuckles here, we got no hard feelings, huh? <laughs> Go ahead, what's your laugh now? Huh? This kid's got some sense of humor. Did you tell her it's Paul Robbins calling? Well, when should I call again? Yeah, right. So Clone's got the alcohol flowing again, and we have no idea where from. Yeah, he's got a warehouse somewhere in the city. I can almost smell the liquor. Tony, you got something? Nothing out of the ordinary. Got some hot photos of Capone's new squeeze, though. If we got to put him away for fornication. He'd been in prison years ago. It didn't come out so good, though. Robbins, you got something? Anything at all? Not that same old thing. Capone's up to his same routine. I've been checking the invoice for the last hour. It's not there. You're 12 short. No, I can't wait until next week. I needed it yesterday. What the hell do you think you're doing? Why won't you answer my phone calls? I've been busy. I've been busy, too, and I found time to call. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of losing my father's business. <laughs> Looks to me like you're doing fine. Well, if we get the delivery out by Saturday, then the line will run for the next six months, then my people could eat for the next six months. Okay, Becky, I have to... I mean, I, I need to... We've got a problem. Paul, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Well, when am I going to see you again? I'll call. So what? What's the problem? This truck just pulled in. It's half empty. Where are the rest of my furs? They get in the way of the bush. Where the hell are my furs? They're using you to bring booze into Chicago. That's a price you're paying Al Capone. One of the prices. Who do you think you are, you thieving bastard? Hey, sweetheart. Oh, sweetheart, you. What do you think you're doing? Get your hands off me. Get your hands off of me. Let her go, Frankie. I said let her go. All right, everybody out. You hear what I said? I said everybody out! me like this i want out of the deal you know you really are a fascinating woman i mean that i mean i don't understand you you came here you asked me for help i helped you you offered me a business proposition i accepted i kept my part of the bargain so what's your problem my father spent 30 years building his good name. If one of your shipments is stopped in one of his trucks, he's ruined. Yeah, well, maybe you should have thought of that before you came here. I put up my money and my muscle. Without that, you would have been out of business already. I wanted to stop. Look at you, it's like a little kid. I got news for you. This is the real world. You make a deal, you got to stick to it. I didn't come to you, you came to me. And as far as I'm concerned, you got what you came for. You want out of the deal, fine. I got no problem with that. But I'm gonna need my money back. How can I give you your money when you're stealing half my merchandise? I trusted you. Let me tell you, you something. Let me tell you something. I didn't take nothing from you. You understand me? Now, some of my guys acted out of lie and they took some things that didn't belong to them. I'm gonna straighten it out. I'm gonna see that you got everything you got coming. Every single thing. 
What about my truck shipping your liquor? Look, we had a deal, okay? You can't have it both ways. What do you want me to do? Look. What do you want from me? Um. What do you want? photos of Capone's new curl. How's the love life? Shot me out cold. Doesn't sound like the Paul Robbins I know. <laughs> yeah, well, this one's different. Real different. Hey, you want to look? It's that second window there. Nothing's wrong. We just found out how Capone's moving his alcohol. Paul, wait. We should wait for backup. Truck's come, we're taking him. Glad we didn't miss the party. So you get the tip, Paul. Frank, should be here any minute. Treasury agents, hands up! Mike, pull them out. Pull them out. Okay. Open the back, Tony. Open it. Help. Pone alcohol. Petrov, that's Becky's last name, isn't it? Damn right. What is it? I just confiscated one of your trucks for violating the Volstead Act. What does that mean? It means you're finished. It means you sold out to Capone. What are you talking about? I saw you with him. I had to say my father's business. Bull! I couldn't just let the whole... How are you going to found another way? We're going to... My back was against the wall. He's right. I threw gangsters like Capone out of my shop 20 years ago. Papa, you've got to understand. Papa. You ruined us. But I did it for you, Papa.
right, Al? Shut up, Frankie. Oh, just came from the prosecutor's office. I don't care. It's your case. I want you to finish it. I don't want to see her ever again. I know. Do you ever think she may need to see you? Paul, she was trying to keep a promise. She didn't know what she was getting into with Capone. She's hurting, too. I just got word from the prosecutor's office. Capone isn't going to press charges. So what does that mean? With no prior record, you should just get some kind of probation. In my father's business? Well, since your trucks were just transporting and not involved in the actual sale of alcohol when we intercepted them, you'll get them back. You're free to start up again. With some luck, you should make that delivery day. Thank you. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just not good enough, is it? Yeah, well, I guess I deserve that. Hey, we're just doing what you thought you had to do. You know, I really care about you. Care about me. Who knows? Maybe we could try it again at a better time. <laughs>